Kelly. I'm Jane. And we're also known as Camp Love Safe. Today, we're going to be teaching you how to build this pull-out, flip-up, L-shaped couch. Probably the best couch there is. This video is going to be useful for three reasons. One, you're learning how to build a pull-out couch. Two, you're learning how to build a standard couch with storage underneath. And three, you're learning how to put it together to create an L-shaped pull-out couch with storage underneath. This is like the best of the best in terms of tiny home couches. Also, bonus, if you don't feel like building anything but want to watch other people building things just to make yourself feel productive, this is the video for you. <laughs> Very true, so let's get to it. To build this couch, you're going to roughly need 10 one by twos, six two by twos, but we used two by fours and then ripped them down because they're half the price, a tape measure, a drill, one and a quarter inch screws and two and a half inch screws, safety gear, clamps, or a friend who's good at holding things steady, and a miter saw if you have it, otherwise you can manage with a circular saw. So we found that the easiest way to think about this very complicated couch is to look at it in three parts. The first part is the frame. That's just any standard box that you'll be making that the rest of the couch is going to sit on. The second part is the pull-out piece that pulls out to make it into a bed. And then the third part is the flip-up piece. That's got hinges on the back and that's what the pull-out piece sits on top of. So if you think about it in these three pieces, when you actually have the couch all together, it'll make way more sense. So let's get to building the first piece, the frame. The frame is built with two by twos, and then this back piece is built with a two by four. Other than that, all you'll need is two and a half inch screws. focus on building both the flip up and the pull out piece. While they are two separate pieces, they do have to be built at the same time because they work with each other. For the pull out, what you're gonna need is one by twos for the slats and the back piece, a two by two for the front piece and the legs. And then other than that, all you're gonna need is two and a half inch screws to screw the legs in and one and a quarter inch screws to screw the slots in. For the flip up portion, you're gonna need one by twos for the slots and the back piece and the front piece. Other than that, you're gonna need hinges for the back and then one and a quarter inch screws to screw in all the slats. Now that we've built our couch frame, what we're building is the frame for the section that pulls out. So we're having the legs and then the top piece and all the slats will sit on top of this. Now, the next step is to build all of the slats. So the last thing we have to explain is the mitered slats. We mitered these at a 35 degree angle and we changed what side we mitered them on based on what piece it's a part of. So all the flip up pieces are mitered at the front of the couch and all the pull out pieces are mitered at the back side of the couch. The reason why we did this is that when you're pulling the couch out and pushing it back in, it's helping these slats go and fit perfectly together so it's not 90 degree angles bumping up into each other. So it's just making everything so much smoother. Instead of having to measure every single board to be the same length, I've set up a stopper system here. So it's just a whole bunch of two old two by fours that I've stacked up. And now when I wanna cut my pieces, I just line it up with this line here. And then I put the end of my piece against the stopper so that they'll all be the exact same length. Now that we have all of our pieces cut on the same angle, we have to sand every single side and every single edge. That way when the bed slides in and out, it does so smoothly and it also looks pretty nice. The only problem is sanding takes a really long time and it's really annoying and you probably don't want to watch. So maybe my beautiful wife can do some new magic for us? You betcha. Thanks Emily. So now that all of our pieces have been sanded and put into place here, what we're going to be doing is screwing them into the frame. So every other piece will be screwed into the pull out portion of the frame and then the next piece will be screwed into the flip up portion of the frame. It's a little confusing but all you have to know, first piece goes into the front frame, second piece into the back frame and so on until all the pieces are screwed into place. When you're building the flip up and pull out pieces, as you can see here, you're going back and forth between the pull out and the flip up. Pull out, flip up, in order to make this slack mechanism that fits intertwined so that when it pulls out, it creates the bed. 
So the only thing that you need to do after you have all these pieces together is add the hinges from the flip up piece to the back of the two by four. And then there you have it. You got a couch. So good. Look at how much storage that is. You can fit an extra child under there. Or Emily. Post me in. We did it. It always takes a few times to draw up your plan, but drawing it out accurately and writing the measurements accurately is going to save you so much time and so much money from making wrong cuts. So definitely make sure your plan is detailed and you consider all the factors. For example, in our first drawings, we drew this couch to be an exact box, but that mock-up didn't actually work because we weren't coming into our environment and taking into consideration the things that are here. So for example, how are we supposed to build a box all the way back when this is blocking it? So that's what leads us to our, our second drawing. Our second drawing starts to consider the factors and is just some ideas of how it would be best engineered, which brings us to our third drawing. Our third drawing goes off of our second drawing by still taking into consideration these things, but really tuning in on the details of where we need the most structural strength and how that's actually going to work with the placement of stuff like this. Now that we have that, let's build the couch. Fun fact of the day, 2x4s and 2x2s are the exact same price. So if you do have something that you can use to rip down 2x4s, it saves you half the cost on wood. So you don't need a table saw to build this couch, we're just using ours to save us money. piece of wood that we took off of the bed. It was a support to hold the mattress up and we are going to try to reuse it. We want to just reuse as much wood as possible so that we, uh, one, are saving some money and two, just not contributing to waste. Oh. Oh. Wow. My. Gosh. That is pretty good. Look at that fit. We haven't even cut it. This is just exactly the length of the bed. Oh my gosh, this worked out so well. Yeah, yeah, I'm really proud of us. And um, I think that if people follow our plans and really take a minute to think about it, it's, it's complicated, but it is definitely doable. Yeah, it's totally doable. So the only thing that we've added is that we've just put veneer on the front. This is repurposed from the back of the camper, so we will be painting it to match the cabinet so it doesn't look this ugly. <laughs> Perfect, and then we're just going to be adding some cushions on the whole thing and cushions for the pull-out portion and we have sleeping space for two extra people. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe because next week, oh my goodness, we? we're building countertops, herringbone countertops out of reused pallet wood. So this is, it's just gonna be beautiful. It's gonna be great. You're gonna see some real beautiful stuff instead of these little ugly bone things. <laughs> for sure. So make sure to keep watching, subscribe, turn on the notification bell and we will see you next week. Jason suffered a serious accident last week. He's expected to make a full recovery. Doctors think that within a month or two, he should be able to start singing again, which is a bonus for all of us here at Camp Lovesick. Jason is an aspiring singer-songwriter who made it all the way to the first round of auditions for The Voice French Canada in 2016. We're hoping that next year he'll make it all the way to the second. We're cheering for you, Jason. Speedy recovery.